something a little bit different this time i'm starting my new series called unleashing and this time we will be unleashing the mindstorms deck that is uh, unleashing the draco genius and you'll see why i call it that in a second um first of all let me just tell you a little bit about what i'm using to uh, to do this series i'm using um, a program called uh, cockatrice or cockatrice if you want uh, or if you will and uh, it's basically it's not really a game because it doesn't have any gameplay mechanics but you can play other people uh online and uh, it uses the the entirety of all the ma magic cards that has been released and you can deck build and so on and uh, um, let me just show you something quickly before we get to work with the deck building thing with the deck build uh, or with the whole um, deck thing yeah you can start a local game or you can play online so you can basically test the uh, decks up against yourself and you can uh, test several decks up against each other let me just load uh, here we go. Don't mind the fact that I haven't trimmed them down to 60. That means nothing to you. That should mean nothing to you or me. You can change the background uh, so it doesn't look so hideous. Like this, the, the colors are pretty atrocious. But um, y as you see, you can, uh, y you can pretty much play an opponent here. And... Uh, it only it relies on you to make sure that if you play anything that you should get that that you should tap it yourself um anyways it's a pretty pretty decent and free uh, i'm not sure how how legal it is but well the program is legal i'm not sure how how thrilled magic uh, or wizards are about this program being out there but uh never mind i'm i'm using it for um for testing a few things and uh, one of the things that I'm using it for is to test or, or see how could you make the Mindstorm deck better or what kind of uh, red blue deck that represented the Isid guild would I have liked for for there to be in um, in, in in Magic 2013 and the DLC that we just uh, that we've just uh, received from yeah that that we've just received that's all i wanted to say <laughs> yeah so uh let's take a look at it okay so uh let me first show you this this program is uh very very simple or actually the, let me show you the the deck editor really quick um it's um it, it, it utilizes a lot of the old card art so you you, you get to see if like for example, Jester's Cap is quite different now than it used to be, and uh, bah, 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 what else? Is it Chronarch uh, uses a different or has different artwork in uh, Magic 2000, uh, 2013, and the same goes for Lightning Elemental, etc. You can see I, I've uh, included all the the cards from the Mindstorms deck, and uh, I haven't uh, shown the build. You can see my I can uh, I can show you in here, but uh, I can uh, but I'll rather refer you to uh, my um, I is it introduction uh, video where I show my build and I think it's pretty much the same that I run right now either way uh, another thing that I want wanted to show you is that um, contrary to the um, the other DLC or dual color decks I think all of them are including exalted and perhaps also all the monocolored decks I haven't tested it, but at least uh, all the dual color decks in the DLC. Um, there are n 79 uh, cards, aside from, like, when you don't include any basic lands, there are 79 cards that are unlocked or can be unlocked, uh, and uh, including the 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 promo cards and etc uh, and and so on uh, whereas there are 80 cards in all the other DLC um uh, decks so that makes no sense to me but yeah that is that uh let's take a look at the different um the different cards that I chose to uh, showcase for you that we can that I uh, that I think should should have been uh, considered as uh, viable options to add to the 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 mindstorm stack so yeah this these are the cards uh from 
uh, the respectively the the Ravnica set, the 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 Ravnica related uh, guild pack uh, set, and the the recent uh, set that just I think it was just released or it's going to be released. I'm not entirely sure. The Return to Ravnica set, and uh, I choose to chose to. I think primarily just uh, take all the cards that are, are uh, that are in some way is it themed. Um, not entirely sure that I got it right all the way, and I'm not entirely sure that I got all of them. But uh, doesn't matter. These are the cards that I chose to to show you. Uh, first of all, let's look at uh, some of the cards that will uh, ramp up your your deck, and which I thought was completely necessary to the Mindstorms uh, deck. First one is the Is it Key Rune, which uh, is a three cost uh, artifact, adds uh, one blue, one red to your mana pool, and can become a, a two, one blue, red elemental, a red or red and blue artifact creature and elemental. And uh, when it deals damage to your opponent, uh, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. That's a pretty neat effect, uh, in my opinion, and um, I think uh, this sort of thing would have made it easier for the Is it deck to. to um, to, to work a little faster, to be a little bit more fluent. Even though it's a 3-drop, it would have been nice to have a 2-drop in the same order, but uh, maybe it's not so far off. For example, boom! Is it Signet, which is from the Guild Pack set, uh, is a 2-cost, and for 1 colorless, it adds 2 mana to your mana pool. So that's pretty good as well. It's sort of the same thing, more or less, uh, except that you don't have control uh, over how mana, uh, how much mana that you that you get. You can't choose to, for example, if you if you have one, if you only have mountains and you just want one island to cast a spell, you can't choose that as you can with the key rune. Anyways, it's still a pretty decent way to ramp up uh, a deck that's pretty heavy in the rump in terms of um, in in terms of spells. So uh, the creatures uh, we have. Uh, Either Plasm, which is a nice, uh, nice tricksy card. It's a uh, four cost, and it would have been decent for the Mindstorms, um, uh, um, the Mindstorms deck definitely, because it, when you block it, it's only a one-one. But when, oh, got myself a message. Uh, when you when you block a creature, you get to take a card from your or a creature creature from your hand and uh, put it into play instead and you bounce the item Plasm. So you can take that Living Inferno that you'll never get the mana to cast anyway. Pretty, pretty insane, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a nice way of uh, of putting those big creatures into play, uh, and uh, you can continue to do so all through the match, as long as you have the mana to to drop the either plasm. Uh, Bl Blister Coil Weird would have been really, really good in in uh, this year's uh, uh, Mindstorm deck. Um, you, uh, it, it's basically like it's kind of like the Weed Dragonauts, except for a few things. Uh, it, it, it's not a flyer, um, but it works in the same way as, as uh, Weed Dragonauts. It gets buffed by you casting instant or sorcery spell. That's part of the synergy. Uh, it's not uh, plus two plus zero like Weed Dragonauts, but it's plus one plus one until end of turn, and you untap it, which means that it's also effective during your opponent's turn. So your opponent attacks you with some kind of creature. You throw a spell. For example, you, you uh, he attacks with a four four something annoying, and you um, cast has a spell that deals, for example, an Electrolyze, deals two damage to, to uh, that creature, untap the Blister Coil weird, and it becomes a 2-2, bam, that creature's dead. Uh, you trade. So that's a pretty nice effect. Very, very um, cool card. It's a shame they didn't add it. It's a Return to Ravnica card, and I don't know, for some reason they didn't want to add Return to Ravnica cards at all. Um, but perhaps it's uh, all about exclusivity, perhaps it's all about the balancing issues. They wanted to get it into uh, Paper Match. You can see how it worked, how the new effects and guild mechanics and so on work before they started adding it to the digital version. Anyways, it's a shame. <coughs> Fairy Impost, I'm not entirely sure it's an Isid card, but um, if you were running uh, some kind of uh, come-into-play effect kind of creature, you could use the Fairy Imposter to bounce that creature back to your hand and get uh, make it kind of like an uh, Ancient Wilds wannabe kind of uh, deck or with some kind of sub-theme or whatever. 
Frostburn Weird is another uh, weird, if you don't know what a weird is, it is basically uh, two opposing elementals being forged together by uh, crazed Izzet magicians and sorcerers and experimenters and researchers and so on to, to make these... Uh, the intention was to make more stable elements, but actually it does the opposite. It makes more unstable elements, which makes them really, really efficient uh, um, attackers, blockers, or it makes them e e efficient creatures for combat. And this one is a uh, very flexible, versatile 2-drop, um, 1-4 two, two, uh, uh, that can become uh, anything from a 2-3, three, 3-2, three, or a 4-1 if you attack with them. Um, or block with it, so it's a, it's a decent attacker and a blocker. Very nice creature. Not that good for the Mindstorms deck, though. Goblin Electromancer is a card I wish they had uh, they had added to the build because it's a two drop two two and it makes your instant and sorcery spells cheaper by one colorless mana. That would really have ramped up um, the 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 deck and it would have made it so much more efficient in a in a kind of healthy non uh, not OP way. So I wish they would have added it. It's a really really good card. Goblin Flectomancer is pretty nice as well. You may change the target of target it instant or sorcery spell pretty cool it's a three cost two two uh of course your opponent might see it coming but it will also intimidate him a little bit so he can't uh, uh cast that go for the throat because you might just ref reflect it back upon your opponent's creatures pretty nice pretty decent uh cool card Gutter Snipe is a champion and a half. He's so awesome and he makes uh, the Izzet deck so much stronger because he turns all your uh, instant and sorcery spells into direct damage spells. That makes any kind of effect that you might want to cast a, uh, a, a, a threat to your opponent's face. So uh, I would definitely run this and I would run as many as they gave me. Um, Hypersonic Dragon... It uh, would have been good in the Mindstorms deck. It's not as good uh, in the build that I choose to show you in the end. Uh, I, I've, I've made quite a different build from the original Mindstorms deck. Um, I might make an, a different video with uh, a, a build that that works a little better or, or that, that fits the, the, the card drawing, the miss it kind of synergetic uh, theme a little better. But anyways, Hypersonic Dragon would have been really, really cool um, or is really, really cool if you have some sorcery spells that you would like to turn into instants. Aside from that, it's a 4-4 Flying Haste for 5, which is not uh, bad at all. Is it Guild Mage? It is one of the two Guild Mages, and it is um, kind of unspectacular uh, in different senses. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2, like all the other Guild Mages, but uh, it has a nice effect that it can copy target instant spell or sorcery spell, uh, except that it's uh, spells that you control, and it is spells that has a converted mana cost of two, uh, of 2 or less. It's a shame, in my opinion. If they didn't, if they hadn't put these restrictions on it, it would have been much better, in my opinion. It, it, they could even make it uh, four cost abilities, for all I care. Uh, pretty nice abilities if uh, if you could at least choose to copy your opponent's spells. Is it static caster? Is great. I would uh, I would run those instead of the race of Finn hunter. Um, it can't deal damage directly to your opponent's face, but it can deal damage to your opponent's creatures. One point of damage. It's a flashed creature. Uh, it has flash and it has haste, which means that you can drop it right away on your opponent's turn and start doing damage. Uh, what's really cool about it is the effect it has on um, uh, token uh, token decks or decks uh, like weenie decks, like uh, peacekeepers or uh, goblin decks and so on that run simi uh, creatures that are similar or the same creature or whatever, uh, several copies of those, uh, because um, it deals one damage to target creature and each other creature with the same name as that creature uh, gets uh, receives damage as well. Mercurial Chemister is a 5 cost 2-3 uh, that has one of the most amazing effects and another of the most amazing effects on a uh, Izzet card. Um, for one blue mana and tap uh, and, and you tap the Mercurial Chemister, you get to draw two cards. You don't have to discard them, it's just you draw two cards. Fucking amazing. It's a little a bit expensive that it costs 5, but not with these kinds of ability, uh, abilities it's not. It's really great. Uh, for one uh, red mana and tap it, 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 you can discard a card and the chemistry 
that deals damage to target creature equal to the uh, discarded card uh, dic discarded cards converted mana cost. Also good, especially in the Mindstorm deck. It's not as great in the build that I end up building because I don't have a lot of uh, huge uh, spells, but still a really, really good card, I would say. Very good, especially for the, the card drawing effect. Or ability. Niv Mizzet Draco Genius is really cool. Let me just show you uh, how it stacks up against the Fire Mind. The fi Niv Mizzet the Fire Mind has a really good passive ability that works very synergetically and very great with uh, card drawing abilities and effects of other spells and creatures. It's a 6 cost 4-4 four, four, and when you tap it, it uh, draws you a card. It's a flyer as well. Whenever you draw a card, Niv miss it, the Fire Mind deals 1 damage to target creature or player. So basically every turn you can do 2 direct damage, 2 points of direct damage to either a creature or a uh, player or one, one to each. Uh, very cool. Or 2 different creatures if you want to. And and if you have card drawing abilities or spells, you can uh, you can do more damage. Basically, the Drago Genius uh, is a different version, and it flips it around a little bit. It's a six cost five five flyer, um, and when you miss it, Drago Genius deals damage to a player. You may draw a card, so it's the other way around. And um, by paying two mana, one blue, one red, you can choose to deal one point of damage. You can ping somebody, either a creature or a player, for one point of damage. That means that you draw a card. So basically, uh, you should have six lands down when you when you drop the Nemesis Draco Genius. Um, that gives that in in an ideal world that is. Um, uh, potentially three points of damage that you can deal to target creature or player, or three target creatures or players, and and uh, what that does is basically draw you three cards. Plus that if you swing in there, which you can't if you tap the Niv Miss at the Fire Mind, but when you swing in there with the Draco Genius, you do damage and you draw a card. So essentially, you should be able to. Uh, draw three or four cards from this ability. I'm not sure if you can run both of them. I think maybe the Dragon Wizard text here cancels out or like they cancel out each other or something because it counts as the same creature. It should at least, but uh, so uh, I, I think it's a very, very decent card, but it kind of ruins the whole passive ability of uh, um, when you draw a card, you deal damage uh, because it's the other way around, but it, it works in a different way. And I would say it's uh, it, it, this card is, is greater without uh, any card drawing abilities. It, it works really, really well. So, yeah. Then you have the Nivix uh, Guild Mage, which uh, lets you draw a card for three or copy target instant or sorcery spell you control for four. It's a two cost, two, two. A little bit unspectacular because you have, when you draw the card, you have to discard it and it's a little expensive. I would rather uh, spend more mana casting the Mercurial Chemist if I had the option. And um, yeah, I think the, 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 the card drawing ability of the Nivix Guild Mage is to make you go through your, uh, your deck faster, especially if you're not drawing those lands or if you're not drawing anything interesting um, and uh, to for for the second ability of copying a target instant or sorcery spell you would have to run some pretty cheap uh, spells which you don't in Mindstorm, so it's not really a viable option unless they put some, uh, unless they also put different instant or sorcery spells into the deck so yeah there's that Niv Magus Elemental is pretty cool as well. It would work pretty well with um, yeah most most Niv uh, Isid decks as long as you're running a lot of spells, uh, also spells that might not be uh, usable at all times that you can use in this way instead. Because you exile an instant or sorcery spell you control, put two plus one plus one counters on Niv Magus Elemental. Those spells don't resolve, or that spell doesn't resolve. It's um it's a one cost one two. Uh, when it comes into play and uh, I would say it's pretty good because you get to uh, build yourself a pretty decent big creature if you need uh, need it um, very easily and very fast um, I think at instant speed pretty much um, from turn one so uh, very decent card Ogre Savant is, on the other hand, not very decent. It's a 5 cost, 3, 2. And when Ogre Savant come into, comes into play uh, if uh, one uh, blue mana was played, uh, at least one uh, blue mana was uh, spent to play Ogre Savant, return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, anybody heard of either Adept, a three cost creature 2-2 two, two, that does the same? No thank you. No thank you, Ogre Savant. 
um, you 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 just sit there and, and pretend you're Rain Man all day long. Scorch for Salka. Not entirely sure it's a an is it card, but it might as well be. It looks very very similar in theme. Um, it's a one cost one one, and it's pretty unspectacular. But it might be a decent end ca end game draw if you have some creatures down. Um, for one mountain, you can sacrifice a creature at instant speed and scorch. Roselka deals one damage to target player, so you can basically ping uh, an opponent for a bunch of damage if you if you need uh, if you need it. So yeah, there's that. Skyline Predator. I'm sure it's. A, I'm pretty sure it's an Izzet card, uh, not an Asaurus card. Uh, it has flash. It has flying. Uh, it costs six, and I bet it's because of it, it has flash. It's a three-four, pretty vanilla. Not really worth uh, running unless you, unless you uh, plan on having a lot of lands down and you plan on running some kind of flash effect um, or flash heavy uh, deck. So yeah, whatever. Tibor or Lumia. Uh, Tibor and Lumia, or if you if you if you'd like, uh, Lion King's own T Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, pfft, silence. Anyways, uh, it's a four cost um, three three uh, not human wizard or not legendary creature. Legendary creatures and human wizards. Um, when you play a blue spell, target creature gains flying until end of turn. When you play a red spell, Tibor and Lumia deals one damage to each creature without flying. It's a nice way of controlling your opponents, um, especially weenie creatures, especially as token creatures and so on. It's a nice little card. Um, you're going to play a lot of uh, blue and red spells and blue and red spells. Uh, so this is a decent control card in that sense. Okay, let's jump to the enchantments. The Dream Leash. Uh, you may play Dream Leash only on a tapped and per uh, a, a, a permanent, and you control enchanted a per a permanent. When I first saw this, uh, when I first saw this card, I thought it was a, a a not as good version of mind control, but it's actually permanent. It's not creature, so you have some options with it. Um, still a little expensive, and uh, you only have the option of uh, controlling tappable uh, artifacts or lands aside from creatures. So yeah, I don't know. It's um, not for me, I think. Not in this build that I'm, that I intend on making. So let's just run quickly through the rest of the artifacts. There are a bunch of auras. This one deals three damage when it comes into play, and enchanted creature has first strike. It's a three cost, a little expensive. It, if it had flash, or if it was a two or one cost, definitely. If it was a two cost or one cost, especially, I would uh, definitely run it. Hypervolt grasp, another aura. Uh, it turns your creature into a Timothy, which is pretty nice, and it bounces back to your hand for two. So it's uh, not bad. A little expensive. Maybe not. I don't know. Decent card. Leyline of Lightning is awesome. The Ley Lines, I think, came with the Guild Pact. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, do, 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 do. Some of them, at least. Yeah. Uh, Ley, Ley Line of Come on, Leyline of Lightning. Uh, if it's in your opening hand, just like the other Ley Lines, you may begin the game with it in play. That's pretty awesome. Very, very cool ability, or else it costs four. And just like um, the Gutter Snipe, it turns your um, turns your spells not just uh, instant sorcery. It turns your spells into potential extra direct damage to your to 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 uh, players. Uh, whenever you play a spell, you may pay one, and if you do, lay on line of lightning deals one damage to target player. That's pretty awesome. That's another way of uh, getting in there for some extra damage. Mind Moil was in the Goblin deck, but um, I think it works better in a Niv Misset, especially a Niv Misset fi the Fire Mind deck, because you get to draw more cards. So uh, in the Goblin deck, it didn't work as well because uh, you would cast a spell and your card, uh, your your hand would be smaller, of course, uh, or you have few fewer cards in hand. So it's an effect where you you basically. Um, Put those. Uh, you put those uh, cards on the bottom of your library, and then you draw that many cards. It, the amount of cards that you draw bec uh, became lesser and lesser. So, uh, if you have some kind of um, effects that will draw you cards, uh, you you still get a decent amount of cards every time you play a spell. So, this is a better way of working your way through your through your library if you have card drawing effects. Uh, so, mind war moil, and and you'll see it. It is an is it card. You can see from the artwork that it has the blue uh, blue red um, coat here or cloak. Uh, has the crazy uh, lunacy magic experimentation blah 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 whatever and the quotation 
My criticism of the is it is that their impulse for learning seems too much like impulse and not uh, and too little like learning. It's uh, an Asorius senator being a dick, like they tend to be. Pursuit of Flight is another aura card, and it gives your creature plus two plus two, and for one blue it uh, gains flying until end of turn. Eh, not that impressive. Pirate Convergence is awesome. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, Pirate Convergence deals two da damage to target creature or player. Wow. It's a five cost, a little expensive, but again, another another card that makes all of your multicolored spells at least into direct damage spells. Really, really great card. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to the instant spells. Uh Bluster Squall is a um, one drop or one cost uh, tap creature to target creature you don't, you don't control and it showcases the overload effect which is uh, a four cost basically. Uh in this case it makes it so that uh, the word target in, in the spell description or ability description is uh, switched out with the word each, so tap each creature you don't control. Uh, this card is fairly unspectacular in my opinion. It's a, Even though it's a one cost, it's a four cost when you want to overload it, but uh, there are other overload cards that are really, really good. Char exemplifies the typical Isid mage lunacy and experimentation. Um, you can see that his hair has, has caught fire. The, the quotation is pretty nice as well. Isid mages often acquire their magic regions from dubious sources, so the potency of their spell is, is never predictable. And uh, yeah, it, it also exemplifies the, the Isid um, or the, the Is It Guild motto, which is a uh, die trying. Uh, Char deals four damage to target creature or player and two damage to you. Uh, pretty unspectacular, in my opinion. It's a three cost instant, but yeah, might work for some. Chemist's trick uh, is uh, pretty good, though. It's a uh, two cost. It uh, makes it so the target creature you don't control gets minus two, minus zero, and until end of turn, and uh, attacks this turn if able. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool in my opinion. Uh, you get to control which cards uh, uh, attack, so very cool. Um, its overload cost is five, and that makes you makes it so that you can make his entire side sw swing in. Very cool because then you you can use it to to uh, make his cards weaker and uh, clear his side for uh, blockers. So. Very, very cool trick. Um, Counterflux is probably one of the best counter spells in the format. Uh, Counterflux can't be countered by spells or abilities. It's a uh, three cost and counter, sp counter target spell you don't control. For its overload cost, which is only one colorless more, you can counter several spells. So if an opponent is stacking spells, you can cast Counterflux and counter all of those spells. That's pretty decent, pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, watch him, uh, watch him cry himself to sleep or uh, f sad quit uh, once he uh, tries to cast that time warp and the reverberate, and uh, and you just uh, throw the counterflux directly in his face. <clears throat> Cyclonic Rift is a really, really nice card. It's a bounce spell that costs two. Um, return target non-land permanent. You don't control to its owner's hand. It's kind of like Into the Royal, I think, isn't it? Into the Royal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, except that you don't kick it to draw a card. Instead, you do something else that's pretty, pretty cool. It's very expensive, though. Its overload cost is seven, but you get to return all all of his target per uh, non-land permanents to his hand and that is his land uh, not his lands of course uh, his artifacts his creatures and his enchantments S uh, and uh, also of course uh, the tokens so um, they don't return to hand they just disappear forever so that's really really cool you can totally mess up his plans totally mess up his side and it's an instant spell so if you have the seven lands mm, Cyclonic Rift does damage. Dispel is a really cool uh, counter spell as well. It's um, it's a one cost and it only works with instant spells, but it works really well because when you only have one island uh, available or or untapped, your opponent might not expect you to have um, uh, like a, an answer to him uh, using removal or any other kind of ba of like. A, uh, buff spell like a giant growth or a, a direct damage spell or something like that so uh, dispel might actually help you out a lot especially uh, if um, 
if uh, it's your turn and in, he only can cast, uh, he can only cast the instant spell during your turn. So very cool card. Downsize, uh, it's uh, kind of like Chemist's Trick. Uh, it is a one cost, uh, gives target creature you don't control minus f four, minus zero, and its overload cost is three. Uh, pretty good. It's um, kind of like a reverse um, giant growth in a sense. Or, sorry, it's kind of like a reverse overgrowth. Um, Dyna Charge is the opposite of Downsize. It gives your creatures plus two plus zero and you can overload it for three. It's a one cost. Uh, pretty decent, I guess. Electricery is a much better Reign of Embers. It, uh, you can do one damage. Uh, for one mana, you can do one damage to target a creature you don't control. For, um, for two mana, you can overload it and uh, use it as an instant spell. Uh, of course, you don't deal damage to his face or your face, but it's uh, still a pretty, uh, pretty good deal, in my opinion, because it's an instant spell. Uh, Essence Backlash, it costs four. It's a really great counter spell. A little expensive for a counter spell if you didn't have this following uh, this following sentence, uh, following the counter target's creature spell sentence. Essence Backlash deals damage equal to that spell's power to its controller. Wow. Try dropping Malfagor on me now, biatch. <coughs> Fire Mines Foresight, very expensive. Seven costs. Search your library for an instant card with converted mana cost uh, of three. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then repeat this process for instant cards with converted mana cost of two and one. Then shuffle your library. Um, I don't think so. A little too expensive. It, if it was a sorcery for five, I would consider running it. It's not necessary for it to be an instant spell because those instant cards that you draw are not going to be relevant at the point that you you pay seven mana for them and you don't need to cast this on your opponent's turn it's it's totally irrelevant in a sense um so yeah sorcery spell because you don't need that extra mana well once you're paying this much like you're not going to pay uh, cast those instant spells anyway probably uh and uh yeah doesn't need to be this expensive so no thank you no thank you and it doesn't work at all for uh, or yeah it, no it doesn't actually it doesn't work at all for the 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 the, the mind storms build that they gave you uh, with the magic 2013 simply for the fact that there's no two cost or one cost or at least very few two cost and no one costs in the deck so get the fuck out Giga Drowse, uh has a a different guilt mechanic than the overload mechanic. It uh, it runs replicate, which means that you can you can copy the spell and give it new targets. Um, this one is tap tap target permanent for one, and you can replicate it for one. Is charm is a really really good card. Uh, I would run plenty of them. It gives you one of three options: you can uh, counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays two. Uh, or you can sap a creature for two damage, or you can draw two cards and discard two cards. Pretty neat. Pretty neat, I would say. I would run a bunch of them. Leap of Flame is like a better um, Thunderstrike because it has Replicate, so you can uh, th uh, replicate it a couple of times. It's only plus one plus zero rather than plus two plus zero, but it gives your creature flying and first strike. Very good. Missium skin uh, is nice as well, I guess, but it's I don't know if I would run it though. It gives your creatures uh, plus uh, zero plus one and hexproof, and you can overload it for two, uh, and give all your creatures uh, plus uh, zero plus one and hexproof. I would say this is um, this would be a nice strategy, but it only works one turn, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's decent, I guess. Mnemonic Nexus. I'm not sure that this is an Is it uh, card. It's back from the Ravnica sec uh, set, and it might be a Simic card, or a Demir card, or a Asorius card. Anyways, I, I just put it in there to show you that this would be an alternative to <coughs> to deal with uh, Dream Puppets or any other mill kind of deck. So yeah. Might wanna you might wanna run this card, uh, or <laughs> if you could choose the cards in the two Magic 2013 Mind uh, Mindstorms build, you might want to put this in. Then again, you might want to put uh, Elixir of Immortality in to do the same trick, but just better. Um, from the Cloudburst deck uh, from uh, Magic 2012, and onwards. Parallelic feedback is kind of like essence backlash except that it's, it doesn't counter the spell but it does work against any kind of uh, spell not just creature spells pyromatics is a really really poor card uh really really bad it cost uh 
Two, it deals one damage to target creature or player, and you can replicate it for two, so that's basically two damage for four, th uh, three damage for six, four damage for eight. Very expensive and unne just unnecessarily expensive. Get the hell out. Throw it after your opponents. Don't want this card. Quicken is, on the other hand, very good. It is a uh, one-cost instant, and it makes it so that the next sorcery spell that you cast is uh, cast at instant speed, so you can cast it on your opponent's turn if you want. Very good. And um, you you draw a card as well, so that's very good. It, it works well with your Niv Mist at the Fire Mine, and it just works well all together. Like It, it, it uh, cycles, in a sense, so very cool card. Reroute is also very cool. Uh, it's a two two cost. Uh, changes the target of target activated ability with a single target. Uh, if your opponent uh, is running creatures that uh, sacrifices, uh, like um, sacrifices a creature, you can make it so that he sacrifices a different creature that he might not want to sacrifice. That's a pretty nice little trick. Um, so yeah, there's so many, uh, uh, so many, uh, so much potential in this. It reminds me a little bit about the, uh, of the Flectromancer. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit a shame about it is that you can only um, uh, target a an activated ability instead of a um, a spell. But it draws you a card, which makes it uh, twice as good. So yeah, definitely want to run it. Rune Boggle is a counter spell, uh, and it counters target spell unless its controller pays one and it draws you a card, but it costs three, and I think Mana Leak does it better for two. So, yeah, not sure I would run it. Maybe in conjunction with Niv Mist of the Fire Mind, just to draw that extra card. Street Spasm is a uh, very expensive earthquake that only deals damage to your opponent's creatures, but uh, I don't know, I don't think it's that good. Um, it's kind of like Earthquake, only on your opponent's side, and only again, like, it, no, it's kind of like Blaze to a creature without flying on your opponent's side, um, in the sense that it's uh, one red and one X uh, uh, to f one creature. But if you want to overload it and, and uh, target all of your opponent's creatures, then it's very expensive, because it's um, to deal one damage to all your opponent's creatures, you have to pay four. To deal two damage to all your opponent's creatures, you have to pay six. And uh, have to pay 8 to deal 3 damage to all your opponent's creatures. That is a little expensive in my book, so no thank you. There's a card that does it better, and I'll show you in a second. Telling Time is really uh, cool. It's a nice option, uh, or a nice different kind of card from uh, Compulsive Research, but very similar in a sense. It's a 2-cost instant, which makes it cool already. Make you look at the top 3 card of your library, and uh, you put one of those cards on top of your hand, one, on top, no, one of those cards on the top of your library. Say that again. One of those cards into your hand, and one uh, on top of your library, and then one on the bottom of your library. So, you don't have to discard any of those cards, which can be good or can be get bad if there's cards that you want to get rid of, of course, because they're not doing anything uh, for you or not working for you in this particular match. But essentially, uh, it's very, very good uh, because it's very cheap, it's an instant speed, and you don't have to discard cards. You, you draw one, you put it into your hand, and uh, you get to decide which card you draw the next turn. So very cool in my opinion. Thought Flare is pretty unspectacular. It draws you four cards and discard two cards for five, and uh, yeah, not much, not much else to say about that. Epic Experiment is pretty funny, uh, but it's also a little bit crazy and not necessarily that effective. It's a two cost plus X, uh, where X is exile the top X cards of your library for each instant the sorcery card with converted mana cost X or less among them. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put all exiled uh, this way in all cards exiled in this way that you, that weren't cast into the graveyard. Yeah, how about that? I don't know. It's a, it's it's funny. It fits with the Issa theme of uh, experimentation and lunacy and crazy magic and so on. But it's also a little, oh, it's a little bit of uh, risk to 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 take. Like at in the best case scenario, you you might get four or five sorcery spells if you if you pay seven to cast this. You might get four or five um, uh, source instant sorcery spell that might work for you and which might help you out a lot. Uh, you might also get one or two or even zero um, because you're only drawing creatures and lands and so on. Uh, so I would only run this in a very ins uh, very spell heavy, trick heavy uh, deck, and um, not even then. <laughs> but it's a but it's a neat effect. It's a nice idea. Flame fusillade is f 
fucking amazing. It's it's one turn of pure havoc. It costs four to cast, but it makes it so that all of your permanents, not only your creatures, become Tims. Uh, you can uh, use all of your permanents, that is lands, enchantments, creatures, and artifacts to uh, ding target creature or, or player for one damage. Pretty cool, in my opinion. Missium Mortis uh, is a two cost, uh, basically an, an expensive flame slash uh, that deals four damage to target creature you don't control. Pretty good. Um, flame, uh, flame slash is a little bit cheaper, but it also has the overload cost of uh, six, which is cheaper than flame break. No, oh, sorry, flame wave, and it does four damage to all your opponent's creatures. Of course, it doesn't deal uh, four damage to your opponent, but uh, still not bad. Still not bad in my opinion. Seismic Spike is a really cool cool card. You get to destroy target land for four, but it also adds two uh, red mana into your mana pool. So basically, if you have five mana, op uh, five lands down on the table, you cast a spell, and then you have three mana to cast a second spell. Very cool, in my opinion. Stitch in Time is a weird and funny and very isid like uh, time warp. It's only three. Uh, it's only a three cost. But you don't necessarily get that extra turn. You flip a coin, and if you win the coin toss, you win, uh, You get that extra turn. If not, eh, you don't get it. But uh, still, you have so many different um, uh, effects in this deck uh, that, that, that makes it so that even casting a spell with no effect is kind of effective. Like, for example, with the Blister Co uh, Coil Weird, it works um, pretty good with that. It um, uh, The Weed Draconos, of course. The Gutter Snipe. The... B -b 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 the not the pirate convergence because it's not a, a dual color but uh yeah it's not bad in my opinion uh but it's a little tricky <laughs> you might want to run it you might not uh but if, if you run it in a way that like you have all these synergetic effects that do uh, direct damage to your opponent then you might want to run it uh teleportal is a very cool card for getting your creatures in there especially if you're for example if you're playing uh um, something like uh, Crosswinds and they're running um, like a bunch of fork banks and you have those Cloudburst Dragons so you really want to get in but you can't get past those fork, bank, uh, fork banks fork banks um, then you teleport them and uh, they get in there because they're unblockable uh, it's a two cost uh, that gives plus one plus zero and makes your creature unblockable but it's overload effect costs five and then it's all your creatures so pretty cool Train of Thought is an unspectacular and a little bit uh, expensive uh, draw card card. It works pretty well with your Nib Miss It, the Fire Mind, but uh, aside from that, there are better cards that do, does the trick much better. It uh, draws your card for two, and you can replicate it for two more, or two more and two more and two more and so on. Vacuum Melt is also pretty un unspectacular. It also has replicated cost three and it bounces a creature to its owner's hand. I would rather run the Cyclonic Rift. Um, and it replicates for three. A little expensive. So that's uh, one bounce for one uh, bounce one creature, not just perm uh, not permanent, but one creature for uh, for three and two creatures for six and three creatures for nine, etc., etc. Vandal Blast is uh, f is is a decent card, I guess. It uh, destroys target artifact you don't control for one and overloads for five. So that's all the artifacts. If there was a uh, if there was a an artifact uh, deck in in the format, then maybe I would run it. Uh, as f since there's not, I don't see the purpose of it. Uh, but it's it's not a bad card, if especially if um, if your opponent is messing you up with a bunch of uh, artifacts that just keep uh, everything tied down for you. You might want to run this one. Yeah. So let's uh, just before we stop, let's look at the or move on. Uh, let's uh, look at the lands, uh, which I felt could have been included uh, to ramp up your deck a little bit more, or ramp up the Ma Mindstorms deck a little bit more. You have the Is it Boiler Works? Um, it enters the, the 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 battlefield tapped. I'm not entirely sure if you can. The the secondary thing about it is that you. When you play it, you have to return a land uh, to your hand, but I'm not entirely sure if uh, if you can play it the first round and not return a, a land to your hand, and because it doesn't really say anything, it doesn't say that sacrifice this land unless you uh, bounce a, uh, a land to your own hand or something like that. But um, once you get it working, you add not one but two mana of both colors, blue and red, uh, to your mana pool every time you tap it. That's pretty awesome. So that's a nice way of ramping up. And um, that's from return. No, that's from the guild pack. Uh, uh, build. Sorry, guild pack set. So you, 
essentially they could have added it, but they chose not to add any dual colored lands, which is ridiculous when when you think about it, because there's this theme of monocolored uh, decks, and now you have the theme of dual colored decks, and why not play with it, uh, play with the lands as well? So we have some options. Uh, the Guild Gate is from Return to Ravnica, and it's much better. If, well, it's not much better. It's 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 great. It's kind of like a volcanic island. I'll show you what that is if you don't know what that is. Um, but it comes in tapped, and uh, after that, it uh, adds either a, uh, uh, an island or a sorry, it adds either blue or red mana to your mana pool. Really cool card, and uh, the the artwork is amazing. Um, hold on for a second. Bit up, bit up, up, up. Oh yeah, volcanic island. Let me just show you that. that they could have added that, but they they have pretty much abandoned the 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 classic dual colored lands. It seems. Um, so it's a pretty cool cool card that counts as both a, uh, as an island and a mountain, and gives you either a uh, a blue or red mana to your mana pool. So yeah, let's move on. Okay. So um, this is the deck that I chose to put together. Let me just quickly show you what I've uh, put in it. Um, we have the Issa Key Rune for ramping up a little bit. Pretty decent card in my opinion. Uh, we have uh, two G Electrodes rather than the one that they give you in, uh, in the Mindstorms deck. We have uh, two Goblin Electromancers to ramp up further. Have two gutter snipes to do uh, to to convert all your mini instants and sorceries uh, into uh, direct damage spells and uh, further the damage spells uh, of um, the 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 direct damage spells that you already have. Uh, one is it guild mage um, simply for the, for the fact that um, the spells that I'm running are fairly cheap, so it's not that bad actually. It it works well with that. Two. Um, uh, is it static casters for control and for dealing with the, those uh, pesky little um, uh, that are token decks and so on, weenie decks? Mercurial Chemister and, and also for, for complementing the the direct damage uh, spells that will so you can kill off some of your opponent's uh, creatures quicker. Uh, Mercurial Chemister, uh, definitely for the draw card effect, because that's pretty awesome. And Niv Misset Draco Genius, because he's a badass, and uh, to run it a little bit differently that, than you would with the Niv Misset the Firemind. Two Niv Magus Elemental, because they're cheap, because uh, they can become huge pretty fast, and they're very flexible in that sense. Uh, two Spellbound Dragons. Um, if I were running uh, bigger uh, or uh, higher drop spells, I would definitely run more of them. I'm really, I really like the Spellbound Dragon, but uh, I don't run anything above. Let me see. Uh, Essence Backlash is like a four drop. Do uh, do do. This is a four. This is a five. The other Spellbound Dragon is a five. Uh, Nib miss it as a six. Not sure if I, I would sacrifice him. This is a five. So this is like the um, Nib miss it is the most most expensive card in in the deck. So that's I I guess I could sacrifice him at the right right time to get in there for six uh, or nine damage. We dragonauts definitely because they work very uh, very nice and synergetically with the instant and sorcery spells. So that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, Power Convergence does pretty much the same, like it works synergetically with the spells, same with the Gutter Snipe, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's so. Uh, that's pretty much the theme of this deck, is to try to turn all spells into, uh, in into threats for your opponent. Not only threats, but uh, like just direct damage to the face. So I'm running a bit. Uh, I'm running um, a bunch of uh, counter spells as well. I'm running uh, two uh, counter flux. I'm running some bounce as well. Cyclonic rift. I'm running two dispels, two electrolyze, one essence backlash, two is it charms, two lightning bolts, which I added because I felt uh, it would make the deck much quicker and actually much better. You had the lightning bolts and the shocks, I think, in the, the Cloudburst uh, deck from 2012. So uh, it's a shame that they didn't choose to put it in there. So yeah, Quicken, I'm running one of them and reroute one of them just for tricks and effects so they don't expect uh, too much. Uh, the sorceries, I'm running uh, Flame Fusillade because, ah, man, 
it, it's it's just a beating once you, once you actually play this card. It's just it, it's just gonna come as a total surprise to your opponent. Uh, two miss him, miss your mortars because you want something to deal with his creatures and uh, something to deal with all of his creatures if you have enough mana for it. And with the um, with the goblin electromancer, you actually get to do that. Uh, one uh, one teleportal as well for the the spellbound dragons. So um, or actually also for the Nymagus elemental. Uh, you might also want to run the Goblin Flectomancer, uh, just for tricks and kicks, but I couldn't really find room for him. I couldn't find room for a lot of things, because, but there were still a lot of good cards that could have made it in there as well. Um, yeah, in, in case you forgot, Sacrifice Goblin Flectomancer, you may change the targets of target instant or sorcery spell. Pretty awesome. But yeah, this is the deck that I chose to build. I hope you liked it, um, and uh, I... Uh, this has been unleashing the Draco genius, I think I'll call it. If um, if you liked it, uh, please leave a like, or if you have some comments to it, please leave me a comment. Uh, I don't play Paper Magic, so there's many things that I don't know about Paper Magic, about the conventions and so on. Uh, there are probably some cards I'm not allowed to run a bunch of, or whatever, but it, I think I built a pretty solid deck, and uh, it would have been fun to see it in uh, Magic 2013. Anyways, um, I will be trying to make more of these videos. I will, uh, with time, not not every week, I think, but with time, I will be unleashing more of these uh, DLC decks um, and and try to optimize them a little bit uh, in an ideal world. Because of course, you can't optimize them. <laughs> you can't just in import cards that are not included in the game. But yeah, uh, hope you liked it and thanks for watching. Later's.